since we're kind of beating around it, what was your impression of the Tucker interview? Actually, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought it was kind of fat because I, you know me, I like history. And I did a little bit when it came to Russian history when I was in college because I did my um, final report on the building and the development of St. Petersburg. And so it was really interesting hearing him go through all of it. And he has a very firm and confident understanding of history. And the difference of, of watching him do a, that long of an interview and be able to talk like that just through the entire history of his country and compare that not just to Biden, because that's any, you know, that's like comparing a toddler to an Ivy League grad, right? Like it just doesn't make any sense. But compare it to even our top politicians that even we like. That is. I, it was very well done. I mean, I was very impressed with him. And the guy's bad. I'm not trying. <laughs> don't need to sugarcoat that. He's a bad guy. But he is an extremely well thought out and intelligent man. I mean, yeah, that's what I got from it. He he definitely controlled the narrative. Um, I, di I didn't feel it wasn't what I expected at all. Uh, yeah. And I didn't expect Tucker to go in and be his normal self. I thought he would, you know, Kind of be a little. You got to be a little careful. You don't want to go to the gulag, so you got to be somewhat careful. <laughs> um, but I, in no way, was expecting just long, long minutes upon minutes upon minutes of of historical perspective of the history of Russia. So I mean, that, that was that just kind of sort of came out of nowhere. And um, but you're right, his ability to carry that narrative and to tell that story over that period of time. That was impressive. Uh, I mean, he was trained, you know, he's KGB trained <laughs> to, to be able to do a lot of things. And His memory is probably one. extremely good if he's KGB too. <laughs> right. But, you know, it, it, it's history. It, it's his version of history that he that he's grown up with and loves. You know, we, we could tell quite a good narrative of our country from, from the, from the, you know, Runic Island in the 1500s right <laughs> around the corner here to, to today. Um, unfortunately, now I, we tell a uh, unfortunate version of our history where we try to sit there and make ourselves feel bad and make ourselves the villain of everything. But if we were smart, know. yes, we could tell a brilliant, an absolutely brilliant story of manifest destiny and us conquering an entire continent. You know, I mean, it is a fascinating story when you look at it and does show the excellency of the American people if you actually look at it in the right perspective. But it's funny because no, exactly what he but, does, right? My, he looks at... A lot of the things that we would say is bad about Russia, Russia's history, and he doesn't exactly say it was good at times, but what he does say is it's a part of our history, and he was very much like it should be respected. Yeah, and, 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 and I can appreciate that. He knew he knew the borders of the country at different parts and times and, and, and where he thought they should be now. And I would again, have a hard time doing that with America, and that's only like 200 years, and he was going back like 600 years. <laughs> We, we can have our arguments over the fact, but the point I was making about him telling that narrative is the ability of him to recall it all. It, it, it was really impressive, but not as much as he's getting credit for, because again, it, we could tell a story that could cover a lot of history on the things that we enjoy about history. But and could you, any of our could, politicians do it? Well, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> you could carry on a conversation about ancient Rome that would last a very long time because, you, because you're interested. <laughs> in it. So what he did, it was impressive, but I think it got a little bit, over the top from some folks and especially on, on the right and on the, on the Twitter, right. That, uh, well, I'd kind of agree laid, with that. Laid it on thick. But the, um, that but should was, be it, the standard. It, it shouldn't totally be the symbol of excellency. No, it was totally fascinating. And, and so on top of this, so now Tucker did the interview, we've got Russian space nukes. We've got all this crap going on. And now they release that he's saying, telling the world that they're this close to a cure to cancer. <laughs> uh, my whole thing about it is, Again, I wouldn't place money on it, but if it turned out to be true, I also wouldn't be entirely shocked either. Um, you know, like China's been saying the same thing for decades now, that they're right, at, you know, they're just about to get there. They're just about to get there. So it, I don't think it's true, but at the same time, you know, when, when you can just sit there and direct funds however you like, you could probably get a lot of good research done, especially when you don't care about the morals either about how you do it. So I wouldn't be too shocked if they have some something new there. I'm not sure if it would be something as easy as a vaccine that just goes, you're no longer going to get cancer. But I, it, it's, <laughs> no, I'm not going to trust that. 
The latest round of vaccines means you're going to get more cancer. <laughs> the, the tumors have grown. We don't know why. <laughs> it must be because of environmental factors. It's because of global warming's causing it. <laughs> it is climate change, baby. That's the whole reason you got turbo cancer is climate change. Well, no, I think I think it's him trying to push again the narrative of Russia good, Russia good, and actually they're a just nation. I mean, uh, again, I I think we should definitely respect them to a certain degree, but they're definitely not a good nation. The only reason I don't think we should get too terribly involved in Ukraine is because, frankly, Ukraine's not a good nation either. All right, you have two bad nations at war with one another. I I don't know why dealing with one is really that much better than dealing with the other. To be perfectly honest, other than the fact, of course, Russia is trying to get a lot of the world off of the American dollar. So that's, you know, with the, the whole uh, BRICS alliance, that's a, that's a major, major problem. That's, I think, why we're really at war with Russia. Because if you notice, when Russia got started attacking Ukraine under Obama, it was in the news, but no one really cared. It wasn't until they started really bringing people into their trade alliance that we started caring. And so that, I still think that's more the real reason why. You got a point, because that is true. And oh, here's the thing. If the American dollar crumbles... Nobody cared about Crimea in 2014. <laughs> if the American dollar crumbles, maybe we'll have like an El Salvador moment when we all just switch to Bitcoin. So who knows? <laughs> Which has done very well for them so far. 